Hello guys, this is Elias with the WPL import team and in this video we're gonna import Metabox custom fields directly from Google Sheets. Now to get started we need to get our Google Sheets file and for that let's go here to Google Sheets and click on this share button and we're gonna change this general access from restricted to anyone with the link. Now once that's done, uh, let's copy that link and go back to WPL import. Now here we're going to select this option that says uh, download a file. We're going to select from URL, paste our URL here and download our data. All right. So uh, now we need to decide whether we want to create new items or existing ones. But since I don't have any restaurants created in this site, I'm going to select new items. We're going to uh, choose the bus type we want to import, which in this case is this uh, restaurants one. Now we're going to continue to step two and here in step two, we just need to double check that our import file is looking good, that all of the data is the one we're going to import. And um, in most cases, you will probably just go and skip this step altogether just by continuing to step three. But today we're going to use uh, a very cool feature in WP import, which is uh, down here. And that is the ability to filter out some records that maybe you don't want to import, right? So let's open that up and we have here this UI where we can select a element, right? From this import file, all of these elements, right? We're going to find them here in this pull down and we can select some of them, apply some rules, right? So equals, not equals, greater than, uh, contains, not contains, empty, whatever, and a value. And this, it's going to be used to um, decide which records are going to be kept in the import file and which ones are going to be ignored. Now, say, for example, uh, all of this is a list of restaurants, right? And say you only want to import um, those restaurants that are very, very good, right? So you don't want any crappy restaurants in your site. Well, we have here this creating element, right? You can see that right here. And this goes one through five. So we could assume that uh, those restaurants with uh, four and five stars are the best ones in this list, right? So what we're going to do here is we're going to select this rating element, right? And we're going to say for the rule, I want to all of the restaurants with ratings greater than or actually equals or greater than four, right? Now we we'll add this rule and apply the filter. Now, when you do that, you will notice that this weird code is generated. And that's cool because this is an expat expression. Now, guys, if you know what the expat is, then you know you can do all sorts of crazy stuff here. And you can even write your own expat expressions and they will work too. Now, if you don't know what expat is, just don't worry about it, right? Uh, the only building port is transforming this file into an XML. And that's the reason why we can use expat. But you don't need to know what expat is or XML or any of the under the hood uh, stuff that happens here, right? You can just uh, work with the UI and you should be good. And if you have some questions whatsoever, you can always contact or support him or go here to our website at wpillingport.com, click on the docs menu, and you will find there a lot more info on whatever you are looking for, right? Now, guys, um, let's continue here. You can see that we no longer have 1200 restaurants. Now we have 607 rows to be imported. And those six and those 607 rows are 607 restaurants that have four or more stars uh, for the rating. So we can assume these are pretty good, but all of these you know, are fake restaurants. So um, nothing to worry here. This is dummy data. So let's get these restaurants imported by continuing to step three. And here on step three, you can see the same layout we had where uh, all of the elements are here on the left column uh, in this right panel. Now what we need to do here is drag and drop whatever uh, element we want from this uh, right panel into whatever field we want those elements to go. So if I go here and add a new restaurant, you will see we have our title and description, and that's the same we have here. So if you wanted, for example, this, uh, I don't know, this description or maybe this location, right? You want this location to be the title? Nothing to worry, guys. You can drag and drop that here and that's going to be your title. 
that one will stop you so you can use whatever element into whatever field you want you can even add multiple elements in a single field and it will work too now i'm gonna delete all of this because i have here this name element and i want this name to be the title then i have my description here it's cool and next i have this images section so i'm gonna drag and drop this feature image and I'm going to make sure this option is enabled, All right? It says set the first image to the feature image. Now I'm going to preview and test this just to make sure it works. All right. And WP import is able to download this image. So that's cool. Now guys, we have another element uh, with images here. We have this gallery field, but this gallery, we're going to import it using the Metabox add-on. So let's do that. Uh, let's open this Metabox section and click on this option to enable our field groups, right? So with this, WP Import will fetch all of the fields contained in our post type, right? So before we continue here, dragging and dropping some stuff, let's go here and see what we're dealing with, all right? So we have uh, these tabs, and all of these tabs contain different Metabox fields, right? So uh, here in the location tab, we have a bunch of simple text fields, and these are not very special. They're just simple text. So here in the details page, we have some other more interesting stuff. For example, we have these two time pickers. We have a date picker, uh, radio and checkbox fields. Then we have our dress code, which is a select field. These four more uh, text fields. This is another radio field. And guys, uh, this has a value and a label. And what you're seeing here is the label. But behind all of these labels, there are numeric values, right? And this is important because uh, this is the values we have here for the rating, for the expenses, right? We have 5, 2. And for example, this rating equals 5. Uh, it's this option right here, all right? So um, then we have here this image advanced field and we're going to use the Metabox image advanced field to import several images uh, to work as a gallery. And lastly, we have this reviews tab, which contains uh, a group. And this group is a clonable group in Metabox. So you can add as many subgroups as you want and Metabox will continue to clone them, right? Now we're going to import this Metabox clonable group with WP import 2. So let's just get on with that, go back here to WP import, and let's just drag and drop real quick these simple text fields, because like I said before, they don't have anything too special about them. So let's just be done with them right now. City, state, here it is, and country. Cool. Now, uh, here for the opening and closing times, we have these uh, options, right? Here they are, opening hours. So I'm going to drag and drop that. And guys, you can also select the value from here, right? And it will work. Just be advised that if you have uh, a custom value, uh, meaning uh, a static value, actually, here in any of these fields, right? You can select a date from here. You can select uh, a value from here, from here too, right? So if you do that, all of these values are going to be fixed and imported to all the records in your file. Now, this is not too important if the records in your file are the same, but if they are dynamic, meaning that this restaurant have a different value than this other one, right? Well, you maybe don't want to do this this way, right? Maybe you want to use the values you have in your file. Now, you can do that just by dragging and dropping them like so, and WP import will use the str to time function uh, for the time and date fields to translate whatever time and date format you have into whatever Metabox is using to handle your fields. Now let's delete this and drag and drop or open scenes field, right? Now you will notice that if you try to drag and drop uh, or rating here, it won't allow you, right? And that is because uh, you need to set this with XPad. Now again, guys, you don't need to know what XPad is or how it works or anything like that. Uh, so if you know what it is, cool, uh, go nuts here. But if not, just uh, select set with expat and drag and drop the value like so, and boom, that's it. WP import will import uh, this value dynamically across your whole file. Cool. Let's do the same with the cuisine, uh, which is right here. Then the dress code, uh, it should be here. 
All right, so here it is. Uh, then the executive chef. All right, phone number, website, price range, which is uh, right here. And the average price. And for the gallery, let's try and drop that. And let's zoom in so we can identify the delimiter this uh, field is using. And you can see that this is an image URL and this starts another one and they are separated with a comma. So that same comma we're going to use here and WP Import will know that it will need to separate these URLs using a comma. All right? Now we're going to enable this option that says search through the media library for existing images before importing new images and we're going to match this by URL. Now what this is going to do is make sure that WP Import doesn't download any duplicate images but instead, if it finds an image that already exists in your site, it will use that one, right? Now, uh, you can read more about this in our docs, like I mentioned before. For now, let's just continue. And we have here these reviews, which remember, guys, is a Metabox clonable group. Now, the way we import this using Google Sheets is selecting this variable CSV. Now, I know it says CSV, but it's more like a variable spreadsheet because it works for Excel, for CSV, for OneDrive, for Google Sheets, for anything that has a, a spreadsheet-like layout, right? So um, let's find our reviews, which are here, and we're going to drag and drop the review name, the review comments, and the review rating. Now, guys, you will notice that these reviews are separated with pipes. So this guy, Aaron Turner, he wrote this comment, right? Because uh, here is our separator and here starts the second comment, which uh, was left by Alison Mayer. And this is the review for Aaron Turner. This one is the review for Alison Mayer. This one is the one for Victoria Pearson and so on and so forth. Now, the reason we're using this variable CSV, right, is because well, we can see here we have like what five uh, reviews and if I click here we have some more here like what like eight seven right so this is a variable number of repeating elements right and we need to specify this separator character now by default is a pipe and this is good because this is the exact uh, separator we have here in our file so we're gonna leave it as it is and we're going to ignore blank fields. Now, if you hover on the question mark, it says if the value of the element in your column or file is blank, it will be ignored. Use this option when some records in your file have a different number of repeating elements than others. And this is our case, so we're going to uh, leave that enabled. And with this, we have everything covered here in our Metabox section. So uh, with this, we're going to have all of this data imported to our Metabox custom fields. Now. Uh, let's just scroll down a little bit and continue with this taxonomy section. So I'm going to enable the cuisine, uh, which is here. Then the booking speed, uh, which is right here. And lastly, the availability, which is right here. Cool. Now these other options, we're going to just keep them because this is some standard WordPress stuff like post status, post dates, comments, look, uh, whatnot. So let's gonna uh, leave all of this as it is. And finally, we have here the function editor, which is pretty cool because this is very easily the most powerful feature in WP Import uh, because it will allow you to run PHP functions on your data and manipulate it however you see fit. Now, if you wanna know more about this, like I said before, guys, just go to our website at wpimport.com, click on the docs menu, and you will find what you're looking for there. For now, let's just skip it, continue to step four. And here in step four, we need a unique identifier. Now, this unique identifier is a value or combination of values that WP Import uses to tell one record apart from the other. Now, this is important because WP Import needs to know when it needs to uh, create a new record and when it needs to update an existing one. So if you want to know more about this, just read this text. But uh, if you don't want to overthink this too much, just click on the auto attack button and you should be good. Now, these options are mostly for when you need to rerun this import, and they are very much self-explanatory, so if you read them, you will probably know what they do. So, uh, for example, this one says, create new restaurants from records newly presented in this import file, 
So if you disable this, the will drill import won't create anything. And if you disable this one that says update existing restaurants with the data in this import file, well, WP import won't update anything, right? In case you're, uh, you want to update stuff. And here you can decide which stuff you want to update. So if, for example, you only want to import uh, images, just disable everything and leave enabled uh, the images option, right? Now, all of this, we're going to skip it because we don't need it. Uh, especially this one that says remove or modify restaurants that are no longer present in this import file, right? We're not going to use this feature, but it's very cool, especially with Google Sheets, because if you run this and you import these 607 restaurants, but later on you want to maybe remove some of these restaurants, say you want to remove these restaurants, right? And you want to rerun this import, WP import will fetch always the latest copy of your Google Sheets file. Meaning that all of that restaurants that we removed from here are not going to be in this file. Now, what happens with the data in your site, right? Well, you can enable this option and maybe you can send these restaurants to the trash or you can change the status to, uh, to draft. Maybe you can set some custom fields. So maybe the availability is, is closed, right? You can type in here the name of the custom field you want to uh, update. And here are the values, so you can mark them closed or something like that. Now, if you want to know more nuclear on this, you can just go ahead and straight up delete them and delete all of the images attached to them and whatnot. So that's very cool because that will mean that you will always have the latest possible data in your site too, right? Now, if you want to know more about how this works, you can click on this YouTube icon. Uh, we have a great video on how it works, so uh, we're not there. And finally, we have here the scheduling options, and this is great because it will allow you to run this import on a schedule, right? So say you need to import this every single week or every single day or something like that. Well, you can use the automatic scheduling. Well, you can set up a schedule to run this import automatically. And since Google Sheets, it's going to keep all of this data uh, updated, right? So if you make some changes here and go here and run this import automatically, it will pull the latest data always, right? Now that's cool, right? Now you have two options for that and you're welcome to check those out. But if you want to know more, just uh, check out the other videos in our channel or go to our website at wpillimport.com, like I said before, and you will find more info there. For now, I believe we're ready. So let's continue and run our import. Now this is going to take a minute or two while well, WP import downloads all of our images. So we're going to let this go and come back when it's ready. All right. So it seems that WP import is finished importing our Metabox field and our restaurants. So let's see if that's true by going here to restaurants, all restaurants. And there you go, guys. We have 607 restaurants, which is the number we expected. Now let's take a look here in the front end. And there you go. We have a bunch of restaurants here. They all look very nice. We have some images, uh, taxonomies, the review ratings. As you can see that all of them have either um, five or four stars. So let's open this one up. And you can see here the feature image, the title, the rating, the average price, cuisine, open scenes. Uh, this is a description, the gallery, and this is looking real nice. And now all of these are the other fields we wanted to import. So they are looking good too. How to get there? This is the address. And here we have the reviews clonable group. So that's great. Now here in the edit post page, we have our title, the description, the different taxonomies, uh, feature image. And here we have all of our Metabox fields already imported, right? All of these are the address fields. You can see the opening and closing times uh, fields are set up correctly. Same as the open scenes, cuisine, rating, Press code, all of this is looking good. Here in the media tab, you can see the image advanced field with all of our images. And here in the reviews tab, you can see the different clonable groups with all of the data correctly populated. So that's it, guys. Uh, there you have it. That's how you import Metabox custom fields directly from Google Sheets using WP All Imports. Now, if you want to know more about how to import or export other Metabox data, or if maybe you're using ACF or Jet Engine to handle your custom fields, you can import and export those two with WPL Import and WPL Export. 
So if that's something that interests you, just be sure to check out the other videos in our channel or go to our website at wplimport.com. For now, thank you for watching and see you next time.